Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Well, I decided I wanted to see how the spring action worked on the new Leatherman Garage number five. So what I did is this uses a, a T8 Torx and I originally started with the flat driver on my Leatherman Surge, but it proved to be a little bit too wide, so or a little bit too big. I ended up marring this the the fastener a little bit, but the wave, the one on the wave, fits it perfectly. So what we have here is the machine screw with a tapered washer that goes on there, and there was a generous amount of lubricant in this as well. And then on the other side is the nut side. You can see where I marred uh, that up just a little bit taking it out or trying it with the surge the first time. And then inside of the plier head has a couple of notches as well as a valley cut into both sides of the tool that house that spring. Now the spring is a triple wrap spring steel, or it makes it a third wrap there. Uh, it is a very nice spring. It has a lot of spring back, but I, I don't know if they use a special tool to seat this in there or not. Eventually, I'm going to get it put back together and get it right. And once I figure out how I'm going to get that done, I'll let you know. But I definitely wanted to let those of you out there know who have this tool or who... Hopefully, we're going to see this in the Leatherman Arc, too. I'd really like to see the spring loader pliers in the Leatherman Arc. And if that's the case, uh, then it's important to know how this how this works. But it's a, it's a really robust spring mechanism on here. I don't think it really takes away anything from the strength of the pliers. Obviously, they have to cut the valley in there to house that, that spring. Uh, but on the whole, I don't, I don't think it's going to really affect the, the strength of these pliers. To some degree, it could. Obviously, the more material you have, the stronger the pliers are going to be. Uh, but this is pretty well done. Now I just have to figure out how to get it put back together. So let me work on that. I'll come back. We'll talk about it some more. Okay, so I'm still struggling to get this thing back together, but I had a thought. I'm going to try to take paracord. We're going to take a single strand out of this paracord and see if I can't loop the edge of this. We're going to form a, a loop knot in here so we can catch the edge of this spring. Then we're trying to hold the two down and pull the spring so we can seat it into the other side because it has to come it has to come about mm, one fourth turn a little bit more in order for that catch on this side to land inside of the uh, stop here so let me give this a try in fact this is a good opportunity to use the scissors on this multi-tool we'll open this up cut that give ourselves a little bit of length and then we'll pull this paracord apart, get a single strand out of here, and see if we can't make this work. Okay, so it took some doing with this smaller string, but I was able to finally get a Zeppelin loop tied in here. And the idea is that I'm going to try to catch this side of the spring while pushing the two halves together so I can pull that spring over and get it to seat on this side. I don't know if this is going to work. If not, we're going to have to try to something else. So let me get this looped in here. Have to get this set down. This might be this might be pretty difficult, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so now we'll set the other plier half on here. Kind of seat it as best I can. Then I want to try to pull this spring until I can get it to see into the other side of the plier half. Oh, looky there. We got it. The spring action is working. Now all I got to do is just get it put back together. Okay, so I got it seated in there. It's not quite tight yet, but I want to make sure that the action was working. So basically, I just kind of had to push everything together once I had gotten that spring set again. And now I just want to tighten everything up and then check it to make sure everything is working right. So we'll get those two plier halves together and it's slipping around on me. So let me get this seated in here. It's difficult to see off angle like this, but oh, just one of those days. All right, we'll give this another try. I'm almost there. Just got to tighten it up just a touch more and we'll be good to go. All right, there we go. And we're back in operation. I gotta tell you, I would definitely not recommend doing that, but with a little piece of string, 
off of paracord, you can get it operational again. So I got the tension back. I might have a hair tight. I might want to back that off just slightly. Of course, some of the lubricant uh, while I was fiddling with this thing, you know, it, it came with a generous amount of lubricant, but because I was trying to work it together uh, and get it put back together, a lot of that rubbed out of there. So it may be a little bit drier than what it should be right now, but I think it's because I got the action just a little, just a hair, hair tight on this thing. So let me try that. I'm going to back it off just slightly. Apologize, it came off camera just a little bit but i had to get a good purchase oh yeah there it is oh yeah that's much better so just barely barely loosening it off again i got the plier action working back smooth just like it was before so you just don't want to tighten it completely tight but anyway i wanted to show you guys the spring action and how it works on this new leatherman multi-tool it's actually a very robust spring it's just a real pain in the butt to put it back together if you ever have to take it apart. But you can do it. So my name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.